Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday here on KudarodosSpeakeasy.com. Uh, I am Paul, joined with Jay. What's up there, folks? And Chandler. Howdy, y'all. Gentlemen, we have, um, obviously, not only have we come to an agreement about uh, the topic we're planning to discuss, but uh, it's very timely because, uh, I don't know about you guys, but I've actually been pretty consumed um, with all of this Game of Thrones and Endgame stuff. Um, and I feel like that this is a healthy environment to discuss it, especially when it's being recorded. Um, yeah, so let's dive in. What should we do first, Endgame or Game of Thrones? Put well, the I'm going to say, say this to start also. I very, like, unattach myself from the situation as far as, like, ah, here's the theory. So I'm just going to be bullshitting this on the spot. All right. It's going to be great. Yeah. Yeah, I've been avoiding all spoilers and theories and all that stuff. So I've I'm, only I'm seen, just... like, one Game of Thrones trailer. Yeah. yeah. That was a pretty dope trailer, though. For sure. Yeah. It was um, very neat. It was kind of interesting to see Arya scared. Like, in the beginning where she's, like, <laughs> just, like, running through the tunnels and, <laughs> you know. And, and I love the juxtaposition of her being like, I've seen death before. I want to see death like this. And she's got, like, one of the dragon glass things, and it's just cutting back and, back and forth between her being cocky and her being fucking scared shitless, all sweaty, and I think she's got, like, a gash on the side of her head. Mm-hmm. I can't wait for her to just, like, look at one of the White Walkers and just be like, not today. <laughs> not today. I learned this no, in no, season no. one, motherfucker. <laughs> not today. I was 12 years old when I recorded this. <laughs> <laughs> they were uh, babies. Oh my god, we've come such a long way from season one. Dude, seeing the side-by-side photos of them? Jesus Christ. Oh, Makes yeah. me feel old. Yeah. Well, this was... Like 2010. What? Yeah. Yeah, nine years. No, no. No. <laughs> no. It, really? 2010? Yeah. yeah, I was watching it in school, yeah. Oh, God, Chandler, stop. I mean, you were in <laughs> school. I was working at a Best Buy when Game of Thrones came out. And uh, <laughs> I remember, like, I had missed the first season. I remember seeing like this the the Best Buy ads for buying season one on DVD and Blu-ray, and uh, I was really tired of everyone talking about it, and I didn't have that HBO, was... and I was like, "But I have a killer discount." Yeah, 2011 actually. Sorry guys, 2011. Oh Jesus Christ, that was a completely different situation. <laughs> now it's worse. Out of high school. <laughs> yeah, I, I got a pube. <laughs> Singular oh, pube. Yeah, 2011. I think my voice dry like. Deepened a little bit. I was like, "Hey, what's up?" Twenty I, like went back up higher when I was in fucking twenty thirteen. I actually started watching the show. Yeah, I remember watching the first season and being like, "When is it gonna get good?" <laughs> <laughs> savage fall. Savage. Well, no, because in the beginning it was just like, because you know you got all these fucking houses and who's who. Like, and it was like, okay, so this John Aaron dude died. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Murder mystery, guys. I, yeah, but it's 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 not a well paced murder mystery. It's like <laughs> you know, John Aaron died, and 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 then I don't know, fucking Baratheon there goes up to Winterfell, and there's Jamie and Cersei, and there's yeah. their brother and sisters, but twin cest. Right, Woo! they're fucking and pushing kids out of windows, and there is this war, and there's this blonde chick in a desert with her albino twin, and and it was just <laughs> like, when are we getting back to the white zombies and uh, John Aaron? And yeah, then it was a very slow chess game. I mean, yeah, and then yeah. like, and then and then like, what is it? Episode nine in the game in the in the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. And I'm like, oh, so maybe we're finally getting to something. <laughs> the actual Game you know, of Thrones. Peter Dinklage is stuck in a fucking cliff made out of a Super Mario boss level, and like, <laughs> you know, like, and then, and then, and then the season just ends with Ned's head getting cut off, and there's still yeah. nothing about the White Walkers or John Aaron. Well, season, that was episode nine, wasn't it? Episode ten ended on the cliffhanger of uh, Cersei, or not Cersei, fucking. Um... Daenerys with the baby dragons. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And baby and, dragon. Right. And then Jon Snow going out beyond the Who's wall. That Pokemon. <laughs> and, baby dragon. 
so and I was like so by the end I was like okay it's good I mean it's kind of cool like this the magic is real uh, mm-hmm. but maybe we'll hear more about John Aaron in season two <laughs> no it's yeah. like forgotten about and I'm like mm-hmm. you know why are we not talking about the thing that kind of started all of this maybe season three <laughs> I mean we don't get I mean, we don't finally oh, learn yes, about too. John Aaron until I think after Joffrey died. Like it's, so, much. I mean, it's somewhere. No, we, wasn't it the um when they were in um when uh, the aunt got pushed down the out the floor gate into like her death. The moon door. Yeah, she like accused. I guess when like um, Sansa finds out about the conspiracy or something like that. I can't remember. Right, but I thought I, I, I thought Joffrey was dead by was that just point. Like, yeah, Joffrey was dead. Mm. Uh, cause Sansa was trying to run away to save her life, so she was like, "Yo, what's up, little finger?" And little finger was just like, "Yeah, what's up?" It's like, "What up, and little homie? I know you don't know me." Like, sexy. Yo, I fucked your aunt, <laughs> and she was like, "That's cool, but like, I'm not into it." Yeah, it's like I, I was fucking fuck you. I was fucking your aunt, but thinking about your mom. You kind of look like your mom, so let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna try and kiss you, and then your aunt's gonna see, and I'm gonna kill that. Yeah, and know. become your uncle. I know, right, Bone? <laughs> <laughs> I just remember, like, I, I think I, like, zoned out for a second, and when I came back in, I remember, like, asking, like, Angela, like, when are we gonna hear about John Aaron? Like, Peter, I mean, Littlefinger just said he did it. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? I've been waiting years, and I, like, space out for a blip, and... Mm-hmm. But despite all of my kind of little mini rant, I do like the show. It's just... Oh, it's, great it's just, like... You know, when it was a George R. R. Martin had said that once upon a time when he started writing Game of Thrones that this was intended to be a trilogy, and then he and then it took a right turn down mm-hmm. a long gate bill like and septology. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> but it's good though. I mean, I honestly, I really started liking the show when they went past the books. Yeah, that's because, a long ride. I know. Listen, there. You can. Angela will tell you there are some times where I'm like, "Fuck it, I am done with this show. I'm done. I can't do this anymore." <laughs> but um, but yeah, but I feel like the, I feel like I felt it just felt like it was finally moving. Yeah, that's good when like you can kind of like get like um some creative license out of an adaptation. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, and For- as far as theories go, I don't know. I don't really have any. I got people like Jon Snow is the Night King. Um, Mother the Grand's Night King. Mother of Dragons is the Night King. <laughs> you know, they're all the Night King. I mean, pretty much. I mean, I'm pretty sure there's a case for every one of them being the fucking Night King. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I people are saying that everyone's gonna die. And it's gonna become like a democracy post war. Well, you know what? That was something. Believe it or not that I said a while ago that, you know, mm-hmm. when, when people were talking about, and this is, like, when I say a while ago, I mean, like, second or third season, they're like, oh, like, I wonder how it's gonna end, and, and I said, I don't know, but it would be great if the throne was destroyed, or somehow mm-hmm. just null and void, that it was, that, yeah, like, you know, like I said, it, that it was going to become a democracy, that, you know, maybe this system doesn't really work. I think that's where I would like to see it go, but I know there's a lot of talk about how it's gonna be like it's six episodes the final season. I think it's seven, something like that. But they're like they're movie one length. half to two hours, right? Each, they're movie yeah. length. Oh, there's six six episodes. So it sounds like the first three movies would be about fighting the White Walkers, and then the ending. The last three is them kind of going down to Westeros and <laughs> City Hall. Oh, oh no, they're in Westeros. Uh, they they go down. They, yeah, you can't fight City, fight City Hall. Hall. You can't fight the can't corporate fight of America. America. They are big, they are big and, and we are small. small. You, can't you can't fight City, City Hall. Hall. Yeah, good stuff. Rock was modern life. That was beautiful. Chandler, well done. <laughs> Thank y'all. Nineties yeah, baby. A recycle song. Yeah. R E C Y C O recycle C O N S C R V E conserve. Don't you P O L L U T E the earth, the land, the sky, or sea, or else you'll get what you deserve. So I like steamroll you. I apologize. So the last three episodes would be them taking on Cersei. 
Mm. With what shows. army? Huh? With what army? Is Cersei an army? I don't uh, really like that see, idea. I feel like it began with the White Walkers. But I know, see, but again, but I know George R. R. Martin is really inspired by Tolkien, and you know, Lord of the Rings didn't end with the ring going into Mount Doom. And if you haven't read the book and you've seen the movie, Peter Jackson has twelve endings. Jesus, damn, gross. So I think that I, uh, so Jamie is going to fight with everyone because it's just like, yo, you told them that you would fight. She was like, nah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stay back because like. <laughs> Let I'm them fight this. each other. It's going to stay warm <laughs> here keep forever. This. <laughs> and Jamie's just like, you fucking skanko. <laughs> you skanko. You a skanko. And so he's going to be <laughs> fighting alongside everyone. And then right. once it's all over, someone's going to save his life, whatever. Probably fucking Peter Dinklage. Uh, and he's going to... Uh, I don't know if the Lannisters are going to completely die. I think Peter Dinklage is going to come out of it. But he might also sacrifice himself to save Jamie, And Jamie's going to double suicide fucking... Uh, Cersei? Cersei. Man. Because the, the witch lady said that she was going to be killed by her younger brother mm. and only have three children. Mm. Yeah. yeah. But each one of them would be taken away from her. Right. So she's not going to give birth. No, um, I yeah, I think that when because there's a scene in the trailer when Jamie goes to Winterfell or we think he's in Winterfell, but there's this line that he says that uh, you know I swore to fight for the living and I intend to honor that. I'm pretty sure that's going to be Jamie in Winterfell talking to the Starks, being hey, I know there's some shit between us, but uh, white zombies, right? Let's get those white devils. It's like, I don't have a hand, <laughs> so they can't freeze it off. We Gucci. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, like, I'll, just to circle back a little bit, uh, I didn't like this show at first. Because mm. the first two episodes I watched at a friend's house with, like, fucking 15 people in the room. Oh, so they're I couldn't all talking. pay attention to anything that was going on whatsoever. And then in episode two, there's just like, hey, we're going to murder a dog. And I was just like, well, fuck this show. Same. 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 So then I rewatched it at my house and I was like, all right, cool. Mountain just cut a horse's head off. I wanted to stop watching the show. That was one point. Second point was when um, Sansa got married off to Ramsay and the whole wedding night thing. And I'm like, God, fuck, yeah. I, I'm done. And then the other time was when, um, when they burned um, Shireen. Little, little Two Face. <laughs> Shireen. Harriet Dent. That's a mean name for her. <laughs> what, Harriet <laughs> Dent? No. <laughs> Little Two-Face Harriet Dent. So fucked up. That's so mean. No, it's not. She was such a sweet little girl. First of all, she doesn't exist. True. <laughs> and secondly, it's a little funny. Harriet Dent. <laughs> it's a little funny, yeah. <laughs> it's a little funny, but still a little mean. <laughs> um, but, but listen, I cared enough for her death to be like, man, I am so fucking done with this show. Yeah. But then he had great moments like um Grey Worm scissoring fucking <laughs> Solange. Um I was gonna say Daenerys riding the dragon. Uh, oh yeah. Totally. Or Same uh line. Hard Home. Hard Home was a great episode where John fights the White King and you know, they're all like I'm not your buddy guy. I'm not your buddy. <laughs> super Canadian about it. Yeah. I'm not your friend, pal. <laughs> Well, I love your pal, buddy. <laughs> still, um, I'm still on scissoring. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the like wildlings going to take the wall was a pretty cool fight. Oh, and of course, Battle of the Bastards. Oh yeah. yeah. And now, uh, dude, zigzag, Rick and zigzag. Oh, I know. Clegane the wall has to happen. Oh, it will. I mean, did you see the Entertainment Weekly covers? No. There's, um, yeah, the, the Clegane Bowl is on the cover of one of them. Mm. Fuck yeah. It's like 12 different covers. Um, but no, but now, now they, yeah. have, now they're mentioning scissoring. <laughs> now all I can think of is that scene where they both undress and they start going to town. And then the Scissor Sisters yeah. start playing. <laughs> Any which way? Any which way again? <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, uh, I thought you were going to go with let's have a kiki. I want to have a kiki. Lock the door is tight. Mm. <laughs> uh, yeah, Battle of the Bastards was great. Uh, so with so that will help. I think that Jamie will probably partner up with the Hound and be like, yo, my family's fucked up. And he'll be like, you can say that again. <laughs> like, Look into the fire with now. me. Just like, <laughs> yeah. Bastard needs to rest. Yeah. Or some shit like that. Him go fight fucking Clig or the mountain. We could get Cleganeville. Oh, Cleganeville is going to be so cool. It's going to happen. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm just imagining. If, George R. Martin, if they don't fucking do it, Jesus Christ. Yeah. No, I'm, now I'm just imagining when the Hound with, uh, what was it, Derek? Derek Bongarian. Bongarian. Derek. You know what I'm talking about, right? The one eyed. What was that? The, you know, uh, the scene where the Hound. And Derek Dongarian, the dude with the with the eye patch and the flaming sword, you know that dude. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, when yeah. when they look into the flames together, I would I just would have loved to have seen like just a sketch of like I don't see anything. Oh wait, hold on, let me change the let me change the channel here. Okay, how about now? Uh oh, yeah, wall of ice <laughs> and or one of the, one of the other guys with like antenna and like you know tinfoil. <laughs> Move a bit towards your right. <laughs> hold it! I can't fucking bloody hold it much longer. Well, he's going to have his vision quest. <laughs> Smack the bonfire. Yeah. What if it was just like him and Hot Fuzz, and it was like, what do you see in the fire? Yarp. Yep. <laughs> That's right, the same actor. You're correct. Mm-hmm. I love it. That would have been funny, too. Yeah. Or better yet, if I could have one more thing happen in Game of Thrones, and I think I might do this when, I, when I'm probably by myself and I'm watching on my computer, and I'll have my phone Make synced it. up. Uh, maybe, depending on time of year. At, at um, least a nut out. Yeah, probably. Gotta get some air. Um, yeah. Is like when Arya kills off um, fucking, um, you know, um, the Harry Potter janitor and his family. Mm hmm. The good. Uh, Mr. Filch. No, what, 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 what the fuck were their. What was their family name? Oh, the phrase. The phrase, thank yeah. you. That whole bit when she takes off Walter Frey's mask and it's her. You know how every time I see that, the Mission Impossible theme starts playing in my head? Oh, really? <laughs> it's awesome. Well, because so many movies of Tom Cruise just peeling off into someone, like a different actor's face, and it's him, and it's like, dun, 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 Yeah, that, I would, that's just once. <laughs> I mean, you can make it happen. We I think I might. I think technology. I might. Yeah. That'd be a good time. That would be. It's me giggling with my ball out. <laughs> <laughs> One single ball. <laughs> but I would One ball question. at a time. Question. Would you go with the left or right? <laughs> well, I think I think it depends. Depends on the blood flow and the time of year and whichever you know, hangs lowest. Right. Okay. So you would be listening to Chain Hang Low and Ballin. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Very thematic, yes. <laughs> yeah, be an early 2000s playlist. Got it. Do you chain hang low? Do the mama thing and up? Fallen. We fly high. high. No lie. No lie. God, I would love no to see lies. Game of Thrones the musical. Have you guys ever seen that skit they did for Red Nose Day? Yeah. That was no. good time. Oh, with the. Uh, they're all in the. Room. Coldplay. Yeah, it's like tries. it's like listen. Even if you don't like Coldplay, that shit was hilarious. Like especially when Kit Harrington shows up when like this the the production's about to shut down, and like Chris yep. Martin grabs like, oh, thank you, Jon Snow. Uh, actually, it's Kit. Thank you, Kit Snow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He tried. The so Funny or Die one. Oh, Gay of Thrones. No, 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 no. This is a birthday party that uh, is Game of Thrones theme. That they have a rap for. No. Sounds I, painful. Uh, it go on YouTube and search the uh, Game of Thrones rap. It starts off and it's like Robert Baratheon, Wrath real nasty. Uh when I drop the fucking hammer I made like a pathogen. With the actors or like people uh, other No, like people look alikes that uh, don't really look alike. Uh it's really great. Uh look at the like Young adult that they got to play Joffrey is so silly. I like what was Seth Meyers? He did one with the 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 red priestess the priestess there. She's at like a baby shower and she's just ruining that it. That was awesome. I love that sketch. <laughs> I don't think I've seen that. Oh, that was pretty. It's good. really good. That was good. 
Yeah, she's just, like just ruining it for everybody. <laughs> like prophecies. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was good. That so, was good. all in all, I think we can all agree that like in the end, Tony Stark is the one that's gonna show up, save the day, fucking rape Cersei, and throw a million Whoa. dollars at the Night King. Whoa! And just be like, deal with it, bitch. No rape, paid. please. This is Game of Thrones. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. Sorry. It's... Rape or murder? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Of your favorite character. Yep, a song of rape and murder. It was the original title. <laughs> At least I went with someone of age. Yeah. Um, well, I guess that comes down to the question of uh, how is Tony going to get there? I mean, he's with Nebula, right? So they're, they're on the same ship. Infinity Stones. You just snap of a finger and real- it's whatever reality you want to be real. True. So he can just, like, get there with his food and whatnot. Nebula will find him on the way and just be like, yo, what's up? Uh, why aren't you dead? What happened there? Yeah, like, oh, uh, fucking cocaine. Cocaine. Hell of a drug. Which was in, yeah. in medieval times called Winterfell. Very true. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I think Nebula will find him on his way, like, because he's just floating through space, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, running out of food and water. Yeah, so I think Nebula will just find him on Going the way. on a cleanse. It'll be like a detox. Uh, what is it? No, 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 no. no. Um, a checker's guide to the galaxy: the percentage mm-hmm. to find somebody floating in space. I still haven't seen or read seen the movie or read the book. Oh, good really? stuff! Yeah. It's a really good time. Mm-hmm. Joe Steph is a fun actor. Yes. Which also, uh, what's his name? Is the main character in that? Yes, Bilbo Baggins. Martin Freeman. Yes. And Alan Rickman was the robot, right? Yes, Yes. the depressed robot. Yeah, it was good stuff. Sam Rockwell. Back to Harry Potter. Yeah. It all comes together. Shared universe, guys. I just, um, I'd be curious just to see where they go after Infinity War. I mean, I, I know everyone's in support groups and it's super sad. Um, mm-hmm. But, like, like you know, and I love that scene in the first trailer where, you know, the Black Widow was like, it's going to work, Steve. And, you know, he's like, it better, because I, I don't know what I'm going to do if it doesn't. I want to know what it is. Like, what is the plan, Stan? Yeah, the man. I do it's, hope, like, post, like, if any were, like, it's a little bit more, like, writer kind of like heroic agey kind of just kind of like everyone kind of like i feel like a lot of times like the heroes aren't very public they're just kind of like they kind of come in for like big events and like leave but kind of like to be more like with the people and kind of like maybe like spin off like a new avenger street level kind of like Mm. thing going on i would like that just more for the people more bright and cheery wait so we're talking after endgame yeah after endgame sorry not okay Uh, so after Endgame, I think. Pass. <laughs> um, I haven't thought about after Endgame at all, uh, for the most part. I heard a fun rumor that they might do a X Men versus Avengers. Okay, I'll take it. Well, you know, I've heard it's it. It's like the next big event. But... Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, you know what's gonna happen. I mean, you know, I mean, once, once, dis- I mean, I feel like, I mean. Disney can make so much. It's like, wait a minute, they can make so much more money with another group of superpower teams. Mm-hmm. Oh, what if they did the like the Spider-Man cartoon? How's that? Uh, like... the the Amazing Spider-Man, where would they had a uh, Drake Bell voice oh, of Spider-Man? Ultimate Spider-Man. Yeah. What if mm-hmm. they did that sort of thing and had like Spider-Man be with a bunch of teens and. Get a group together that way, like a oh, super friend with Nick Fury uh, doing the, "Hey, Spider Man, you're the future. I believe in you." <laughs> Could be. I like Young Avengers. That'd be really cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah, that could be cool. I uh, I'm just dying to see 
what would happen the the there's there's running theory right now that Endgame could possibly open the door to the next big bad which would be um I think it's either like Kronos or Kang the Conqueror mm-hmm. um because of, because because uh, there may be some time travel involved I don't know if you guys have seen any yeah. of the photos where it looks like Tony and Ant-Man and the Hulk are back at um Battle of New York. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah, it would be cool. Yeah, I just. I it mean, would be cool as fuck. I mean, especially if it's like, you know, like and like Kang is the one who bestows them the ability to go through time, um, mm-hmm. and that he's held prisoner in the quantum realm, which is where Ant Man is. So that there might be some Ooh. sort of a correlation there. Um, could be. I get nervous with time travel though. Like, I don't want it to be a yeah, thing I, where they pull, like, a Joe Quesada and, like, they undo everything. Like, yeah. how they undid decades of Spider-Man comic continuity. Yeah, it's a cop-out, yeah. Like, you know, don't make it, like, fucking Back to the Future where they go back and, you know... um t- his mom? Well, um, not even that, but just like, oh, like, oh, like, Cap was never frozen in ice and Hawkeye wrote a popular science fiction book and uh, <laughs> his this kid's never worked at Pizza Hut. <laughs> but at the same time, these are comic book movies. I know. What would be more comic booky than a cop out like that? I can get than a than a, a retcon. Yeah. Um no, I, I, I just hope it's a solid bookend, you know, where it's like complete and then whatever comes next is just yeah, you know, that's yeah. that's it. Like Chandler they said, keep it. sorry, go ahead. No, no, I was gonna say, you know, and then moving forward, and they, and they could always bring back key players for the big events, but you know, right? Well, they could always do a multiverse thing too. I think that's like too advanced for like the average moviegoer. I think yes. they just kind of keep it. I think they should keep it grounded. Like I think like Kang would be a nice next villain. I don't want them to get like too high level cosmic because then like I think you start losing people. Right. They just kind of keep it like somewhat grounded. Like my favorite <laughs> Marvel movie, to this... yeah, I guess. But like that's more of a Fantastic Four. I think like right. my favorite movie still Marvel movie is like still Winter Soldier because it was just so grounded and like low tech. If you not low tech, but like kind of like it wasn't like super cosmic or super like fantastical. Right. It was just very right. much like grounded spy thriller. Yeah, like, real they stakes. Were just like like they were like super spies. Just like right. you know, like, it, like they weren't immortal. They were just their their natural human abilities were heightened. Like they right. didn't I have any yeah. any right. special ability. They could just fucking punch really well. And honestly, that scene of Cap running through the office was fucking awesome. Yeah. What a great display of showing his uh, agility. The thing about Winter Soldier is that it's really just a really great spy thriller in general, where they happen to have superpowers. You're right. Opposed to it being specifically like. Oh no! This this is like about Ant Man. This just happened to be a good spy throw that had Captain America. Right. Yeah, I think if so, they yeah, huge difference there. Right. If I think if they just have their heroes in their own movies, staying in their own lane, like with mm-hmm. Cap doing, you know, the spy stuff and Thor doing the Ragnarok stuff, you know, and then they kind of come together for something else. Um. Like, have an occasional crossover movie or something like that. I know that they said that they would never have anything as big as this ever again. Like, it's great. I like that. They could do that is with, like, an Avengers vs. X-Men sort of thing, but they have to build the, like, mutant universe in general first, yeah. anyway. I don't know, I and I would love to see how they do that. And, I mean, yeah, I would just, I would love to see what the, what causes the mutation or, or you know, I mean, yeah, I don't know. Uh, it'd probably be the same water that Blinky the fish came from in Simpsons. I just don't want it to be like, oh, they're mutants. That they were a problem the whole time. You know what I mean? Like, like <laughs> yeah, I, I get that, and that would just bring us to the whole like uh, multiverse scenario sort of thing. Yeah, but uh, they might like. I'm oh, sorry. Oh no. Or if, what if they had the like island of mutants sort of thing? Too? Oh, Genosha. Yeah. I don't like, know. They were I... just outcasted already, but nobody like they were just like fuck you society. I don't. I mean, I think. It, I mean, maybe it's a cop out, but I, I, I think you know, whatever happens in Endgame, 
whatever side effect is, you know, results mutation. Because in, in the X-Men comic books, what they were always alluding to in the 60s was the atomic bomb was what kick-started mm. the X-Gene. Like, it was like it was like a huge leap in human evolution. And because it was all over the place, that's why, like, nobody was evolving the same way. It wasn't like everybody was evolving a third arm. You know, because it was all over the place was because of the, you know, the atomic bomb and radiation and all that shit. And it'd be curious to see if, like, you know, if they were to somehow able to reverse what Thanos did, but with some crazy weird side effect. I don't know. Yeah, I think, like, I mean, they might, like, consolidate some, like, comic book events. Like, they might, like, kind of, like, I think one of the big theories is, like, the kind of, like, the House of M kind of backdoor for, like, the mutants mm -hmm. to come into the reality. Because, mm -hmm. like, you know, Scarlet Witch is pretty powerful. She has a power of, like, she, her power came from an Infinity Stone. She's red, reality stone's red. Hey, something might happen. Because, you know, she's definitely pissed after Thanos killed Vision. So, right. I'm just going to throw that out there. Oh, yeah, that's true, too. Or especially with, you know, in that in that continuity, her parents were killed by one of Stark's um, weapons. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, you know, and it'd, it'd be funny if, like, you know, in resurrecting her father, you know, she creates somebody like Magneto, where it's, like, not quite the... It's like a tainted version of what her dad. But I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. so, I just know that I want to see some good X Men movies. Me too. I'm not. I heard a funny fan theory for what? Endgame. So, so uh, man, I I hate this theory though. I hate it so much. Just go for it. I. <laughs> uh, th so the theory is that they've been alluding to how it'll be fixed in every movie that Tony Stark has been in, which is because he is constantly playing with his left wrist. Like, Maybe. every time, he'll, like, be adjusting a cuff or his watch or something, okay. and he's always, it's always his left wrist that he starts with. So the theory is that he'll be getting the gauntlet because it's on the left hand. That's so, like, that's reading too much into it, I think. The, that like, is some weak tea. Right. <laughs> it, it's like such shit. Let it steep a little longer. Yeah, that at is. At the same time, like, imagine tea. the troll of it. Yeah. Like, they're just planning this from the fucking get go. I don't know. I mean, my concern is, is that, you know, if they're going to try and assemble all the Infinity Stones to reverse what Thanos did, then that means that, they're, you know, the, for the Soul Stone, there has to be a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Well, they already have the stones. They don't have to, like, recollect them. <laughs> it's like the Dragon Balls. <laughs> they re they rescatter every time. Well, I thought the st I thought the stones went with Thanos when he went back to his farmhouse. Yeah, his, like, gauntlet, yeah, like, so crushed the shit, and the stones were there. <laughs> Old McThanos had a farm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Snapped Port his finger. It's like, Thanos is like, listen, guys, I don't want to fight. I just want to retire. And write my country album. What if, what if uh, Doctor Strange just shows up out of nowhere with Tony Stark and is just like, you, you need to do the thing. Oh, wait, did I go back too far? Whoopsie. <laughs> yeah, I'm just imagining the, the line from Back to the Future. Like, I have to tell you about the future. <laughs> what? I have to tell you about the future. And then, you know, he runs to his DeLorean. Like, I gotta go before it's too late. Dun, right. dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I was thinking the Justice League thing. Yeah, that would be such a fuck shit troll, though. Tony Stark, because he's always been playing with his left hand. <laughs> oh, I hate that theory. Yeah, it's like, just so like no I, one's ever thinking. About I feel that. like I feel like the whole Kang the Conqueror being a prisoner in the quantum realm is like that sounds cool. Yeah, like that, like you know, and, and and the whole thing is like, well, hey, if I help you, you gotta help me. Like, I'll I'll give you, you know, because in these pictures of them in the Battle of New York, they got these like wristwatchy things. Hmm. And. uh... I haven't seen too many like pictures or anything like that. I saw there were like space travel outfits or whatever. Yeah. But all like, I it could 
be a thing too where it's like oh hey to do the thing you gotta make a deal right all i know is is that i'm gonna get a movie with rocket raccoon and the avengers and i'm kind of excited about that oh but sad r.i.p the model uh for rocket passed away i know what was the raccoon's name again like I... mr marshmallow something like that yeah that is sad but I'm, but I'm sure they, I'm sure they have like countless hours of like footage of that raccoon that they could still use. Yeah, but R.I.P. Oh no, it's still sad. Ones. It's still sad. Like right up there with Stanley. That's very sad. When I was in the theater for the most recent movie, uh, when Stanley was on screen, everyone just went, "Oh, like, yeah, fuck off! You knew he was dead." It's not any more sad. And you already should have known that he recorded these cameos. Yeah. Unless they weekend at Bernie's his ass, then it's not sad. Yeah. Man, I want to talk about that cameo bad, though. Yeah, well, we will soon enough. Uh, yeah. we, will, we will do our Captain Marvel yeah. review. Which, P.S., I loved it. Um, um, I think it's middle of the pack. Yeah. yeah. But we can get into that another time. Mm. But, yeah. I'm tired. Yeah. We are all so, very tired. So, general, general theories. Let's give everyone two minutes for... One minute each, Game of Thrones, and one minute for Endgame. For easy theories. Chandler, mm. you start. Um, I will go with Pressure. the uh, standard for Game of, Th- Game of Thrones. Uh, uh, either m- most of the monarchs die, or at least like Daenerys and Jon survive. They're like, hey, this isn't really worth it. Let's just do a democracy. Leave it to the people. We've lost enough. Um, that was pretty quick, actually. <laughs> and um, end game theory is um, everything goes back to normal. Um, certain characters don't come back or like just go off into the sunset. Um, if they're going to do mutants, maybe some like energy blast from the gauntlet or Scarlet Witch going ham tastic crazy um, creates mutants. Um, yeah, or opens a dimensional portal. Worlds merge. Yada yada. Um, you That's still have a minute. Uh, I love you guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you did the this first is a great one podcast. in 30 seconds. Love you listeners. The second one in 30 seconds, too. <laughs> All right, fine. Uh, <laughs> Game of Thrones, I think that Daenerys and Jon are going to have a kid. And that that's going to be the right flair to the throne. They're going to survive and it's going Dude, to bring the houses together. With Tyrion being the hand of the king and queen. And Cersei being killed off by uh, Jamie, and we get Clegane Bowl, and the fucking Night King is actually going to be Bran, but Bran's also going to take himself out to break the cycle of all this shit happening, and everything's going to be happy in the end for that. And then for <clears throat> Endgame, I do like the idea of Kang the Conqueror in the like different dimension, having him and Ant-Man work together, Ant-Man figure out some multiverse powers and whatnot, that'd be cool as fuck. And Captain Marvel's gonna be like, ooh, look at me, I got weird feet. And, <laughs> uh, yeah, look at Brie Larson's feet sometime. I don't, I don't really want to. <laughs> I don't want to Google image that. Do it. You're gonna regret it. It's gonna be great. <laughs> uh, and yeah, it it's gonna probably set some stuff back, and it's gonna be a lot of time paradoxical things. But in the end, it's gonna be cool for what the future can bring. And I'm really excited for Spider Man anyway, because like, it I thought Far From Home was originally going to be him in space, but it's really him in fucking Europe. Hmm. Well, well, I'm not too sure what's gonna happen in Game of Thrones. I do think that um. That maybe whatever John and Daenerys decide to do, uh, maybe at the start, maybe they'll slowly introduce the idea of democracy rather than trying to do it overnight. Um, 
as far as who lives, who dies, it's any, anybody's guess. I have no theory. I have no working theory about who the Night King is. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think that's kind of part of the excitement of Game of Thrones is that I just don't know. And sort of along the same lines with Endgame, but I do think that, I, I don't know, I, I, I think that there may, I don't know, Someone's gonna die. I I, I do think it's gonna be having have something to do with this with uh, the Soul Stone because even though like Thanos has, I I think any time the stone passes to somebody else, the user has to have a sa- make a sacrifice, and so who the who will be the person to wield it, and who the sacrifice will be, I don't know. I just don't know. I'm scared it's Cap because they they gave Cap a lot of attention in the trailers, especially when he's holding the compass with Peggy's picture in it. Mm-hmm. Um, and as we all know, she's dead. So I don't know if there's going to be like a reunion coming up, a soul reunion. Um, I don't know. And also in the Infinity War commentary, the Russo brothers said that Cap's original entrance to the movie was much, much, much later, like third act later. And they said mm-hmm. one of the reasons why they felt comfortable doing that was because of the large role that Cap plays. In. Uh, so something's going on with Cap. I hate to see him go. I mean, I know, you know, everyone's saying that this is Chris Evans. This is this is last Cap outing. But but I've also heard Kevin Feige say like, well, I mean, you know, he's not done done. So who the fuck knows what that means. Yeah. So what if curveball? It ends up being the Tony Stark thing. His sacrifice is Cap. I mean, that could That's... be. No. He cares more for Cap than he does Pepper. Or either. <gasps> yes. Either that or my Pepper's ship is coming gone. true. <laughs> I mean, that could be it. It could be. Mm-hmm. It could be. I like yeah. the idea of like Tony Stark, like. Not having any more Iron Man movies, but having cameos like he did in Homecoming. Like he's just there and other kind of in the background tinkering, doing stuff. Like yeah, him well, becoming kind of a new Fury. I mean, and he was for a time of the comics, so I mean, it would be right comic book accurate. Um, but we know Fury is still around because of the trailer for Spider Man. Well, unless it's. I want Fury back. Yeah. I want my theory back. <laughs> um, I was trying to think what else was I going to say as far as uh, end game stuff goes. I do know that there's been a lot of leaks for like toys um, coming out this summer in, re- in regards to end game. And uh looks like one of the figures is like a battle armored Thanos, which I wanted to see more of. Like it was. Yeah, same. It was cool. I mean, yeah, I mean, his sweater vest was nice and all. <laughs> um, but I, I want to. S- that wasn't a sweater vest. <laughs> just that a, was like. It's a, like a tunic. <laughs> nah, that's a muscle shirt. Is it a muscle shirt? Oh, yeah. <laughs> the fuck was yoked. Whatever, whatever it was he was wearing, he was showing off the guns. Um, yeah. and um, I, it was great. The effects were great, but I want to see armored Thanos. Yeah. Because that's yeah, how Thanos he is in the. Cool. Yeah, that's how he is in the comics. I want the helmet. You know, I want. I want Thanos to fight for his life. <laughs> for those who don't know, that was me referencing uh, RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> Lip sync for his life. I oh, dang it. That. I ruined it. Oh, it's okay. We got it. I didn't get that. Mama Ru, I like you too. RuPaul. <laughs> well, the gays got it. <laughs> Probably like, yeah. I hope so. <laughs> I'm a good ally. <laughs> but uh yeah i mean plenty to mull over um i'm sure angela will i know angela wants to do something for game of thrones when it gets a little bit closer to the premiere so okay. uh and she's been watching theory videos like non-stop oh man that's a rabbit hole like sh- like in full-on conspiracy theory we got like red string everywhere like connecting like <laughs> printouts of like pictures of the cast and the like, maps, the problem, timelines. The problem with going down the rabbit hole of like all these different theories is that like some of them are bound to be right. Yeah, of course. And 
anyone can start claiming it as like they can be like, oh, I saw that on YouTube. Like I told you about it. I totally knew that was gonna be a thing. It's like you're playing a fucking numbers game, right? right. There's only so much you can do creatively. I mean, like yeah, like, and also I think everyone just I don't know. I think everyone just trying to be like first. The guy called it. Yeah. It was like being with Attack on Titan. I was a prick with that. Man. With fucking uh, Blondie Magoo being the... <laughs> Blondie Magoo. <laughs> yeah, I forget names because I stopped watching that show because it got really boring. Mm. Because they waited four years to come out with season two. Yeah. God, I... Drag. Fucking idiots. I know. I've, I've fallen off the manga too just because... I don't know. Well, speaking of... I've been reading Thick Elf. <laughs> it's a beautiful segue. Actual title? Yeah. No, it's actually called Plus Sized Elf. Okay. But, like, she's thick as fuck. <laughs> Dumb thick. She's Stupid thick. Yeah. Stupid thick indeed. Uh, <laughs> I think it's really fun. It's about, like, an elf coming to Earth through some weird interdimensional travel. And she can't go back. Because she's full, like she's addicted to French fries and other potato products. I can relate to that. And like for her to go back, she has to be the same exact weight and everything that she was when she got there. <laughs> so tedious. <laughs> so what she does is she goes to see a nutritionalist. It's just like you need to work out and stop eating French fries. So like, oh, bad one. Like then, <laughs> like <laughs> chapter <laughs> chapter one ends, and it's like, okay, cool. I went back, but now I'm back here again. Or like, oh, I wonder what she's up to. And he sees her in the supermarket. And he's just like, what the fuck? Why are you here? And you already gained back all that weight. She's like, yeah, I went fucking ham on these fries. <laughs> and there's other elves that get involved and shit, and other beings that are just a addicted to fucking people food because that's a one thing that'll save our planet if there's anything we've learned from Dragon Ball Super <laughs> it's deep fried foods it's all of our food our <laughs> fine ass cuisine that makes us thick <laughs> that's what's gonna save us that's why that's how Thanos is gonna be defeated <laughs> the thickening he's gonna eat some fries and be just like what is this my child humans are alright <laughs> it's like Wait, I got rid of Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> no. All right, bring me to Flavor Town, Fierty. <laughs> space, <laughs> Space Stone to Flavor Town. Yeah, it's also a book <laughs> that uh, I've decided I'm gonna push it anime Boston. There is nudity and lewdness in it, but like etchy comedy is fun and fun to me, and I think I can get people to get into it. Okay. Like, she's even wearing a t-shirt that says, I love oil. <laughs> and holding fries. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking thick ass. Plus asshole. size elf. Okay. And then on the back is just the different types of fried stuff she's eating <laughs> in the process of making fries. <laughs> the life cycle of potatoes. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah, it goes, uh, let's see, potato to peel, to cut, to fried, to love. Back Aww. to potato. Apparently we shit potatoes. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've been reading lately and other stuff, but I'll save that for another time. All right. Cool. 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 Uh, just to clarify, too, that's thick with like two C's, no. <laughs> and then spaced out one space in between each letter. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I just wanted to like clarify because, like, if I'm saying thick as in like T H I C K, then I, that's just being offensive. <laughs> and like, I don't want to fat shame or anything like that. Thick with two C's and spaces between everything is a good thing. I'm into it. Send me your numbers, girls. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chanley, been reading anything, watching anything? Um, have not been reading comics recently. I've been reading this really cool book called um, Mr. Unavailable and the Fallback Girl by Natalie Liu, who is a um, pretty awesome podcaster at the um, her podcast called The Baggage Reclaim Sessions. Um, she mostly talks about like relationships, emotional availability, and just kind of like how like you can sort of devise strategies, kind of develop and attract like fulfilling relationships. 
And um, it's just very helpful. And um, yeah, it's a great book. Um, it helps me kind of like, it's mostly like the audience is obviously targeted towards women, but like it does help me like um, in terms of like understanding my own emotional unavailability at times or kind of like when I see in other people and kind of like what like safe steps to take in order to kind of like shut it down and like find people who are like open and receptive and kind of not even just like dating relationships, but just like friendships too, like hmm, relationships right. in general. So, I like it. I get that. It's good shit. I, I listened to the um, Nicole Byer podcast, the Why Won't You Date Me, <laughs> which is all about like online dating and stuff like that. And it's neat to hear like just a different perspective from someone that's not your own. That's just being honest about it. So like hearing all that type of stuff in general really helps because like you don't really always think like oh right. why aren't they texting me back like they, this is something i like to do like why aren't they doing it right so yeah i totally get that that's cool that's cool thank you i am still reading x-men what percentage done are you oh god i don't even know because you know because then it's like oh i gotta read a bit of x factor and new mutants and all that but basically x factor um their whole thing is just being apocalypse you know okay and then Nate, like a progress bar yeah i know i wish um and it's tough because like because it keeps growing because you know X Men's you know thankfully still being published. Um, yeah. But Dude, what song is that, Jay? <laughs> I don't know. I'm making it up as I go. Oh, okay. Is that, I thought it, I'd make it more dramatic. Oh. Uh. I thought that was like you know when your Oscar speech is going on for too long and they play the music you to shut the fuck up. Yeah, no, like the Super Smash so Brothers. Be doing that immediately upon you being like. Well, I'm still reading Max X Men. Get off the stage. Get off the fucking stage. And I want to thank Jesus and God and Allah and Buddha and Odin. No, Ray Ray. And Zeus. That would be fun. I want to thank God, Jesus, Allah, and no Ray Ray. You know what you did. But X Factor, there, yeah, the, Ray Ray? the 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 apocalypse is what? Uh, X Factor is that Ray Ray? <laughs> oh. <laughs> Ray Ray's got the X Factor. No, um, yeah, they're fighting apocalypse, and uh, it, we're kind of finally at the point where Nathan Summers is infected with that nanotech virus, tech cool. organic virus. Yeah. And so, Is but this it's 90s. Yeah, it's like early 90s, and it's interesting because Cable has been introduced. So there's like an old man Cable and a little baby Nathan, and you don't know who Cable is yet because you know time travel. Mm. Um, but it's cool though, um, because I think Apocalypse is like a ridiculous villain, um, in all the right ways. So um, cool. Oh yeah, and um. Yeah, and then so then so that just happened, and now um, the X Men are at Muir Island, where you find out that the Shadow King um, is controlling everybody there, and so the X Men I gotta go and shake things up. And uh, there's also a new book I'm gonna start reading called Lovecraft Country. And it's basically how it was pitched to me was it's as if the Green Book took place in a world written by H.P. Lovecraft, which is interesting because I hear Lovecraft is a bit racist, <laughs> but um, yeah, but I like it. the idea of like a, like a road trip with demons, um, and it's actually about a black man who has come back to America after the Korean War, mm. and his uncle has like a almost like a green book type company and so it's like him his uncle and another character um go on this road trip to figure out what happened to his dad who's gone missing um and they go to one of the fictional um massachusetts towns that uh lovecraft uh created so i'm excited to dive in on that sounds like a good time yeah it is a good time and Ultimate yeah. X-Men, because uh, I was kind of taking a break from Claremont yeah. X-Men and went back to Ultimate X-Men. Yeah! Um, there's a lot of it that I still like. 
Mm -hmm. But man, I feel like they really go out of their way to make Wolverine a dick. Yeah. Like attempted murder it, you know. incredibly <laughs> dickish like first, yeah. like first of all like jean gray like she's a teenager i don't know how old this logan is but they are totally fucking in that first arc mm -hmm. and he was like sent there by magneto to kill xavier and then and the part i'm at right now um wolverine leaves cyclops for dead in the savage land so he could get back with gene and it's like God, I like Wolverine, but I hate Ultimate Wolverine. Like, just like I can't yeah. root for this guy whatsoever. Yeah. I think um, you're trying to like do like the uh, Ultimate Captain America thing, where he's like a dick, but then they went a little too far. They made him too Republican. Yeah. So yeah. he's for abortion. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Oof. Yeah, he is not pro-choice. <laughs> Um, but yeah. Yeah, I said that wrong. What do you think this letter stands for? France? Yep. F is for friends who do stuff together. U is for you and me. N is for anywhere, anytime at all, down here in the blue sea. What a bop. You might hear it at Anime Boston. I'm okay with that. Okay. When When is that? Is that in April? Yeah, I think it's 21st. Is it 23rd? Isn't it usually? Hey, blaze it! Don't they Hell like? Yeah. Don't they time it with Easter? Yep. Yeah, I don't know why they do that, but whatever. Easter's on uh four twenty one. Nothing it's says. Only in March. Nothing says uh, celebrating the return of Christ like uh, some hentai. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Get a little squiggly, squiggly. <laughs> Oh. oh, okay, that was graphic. <laughs> <laughs> Highly well, descriptive. <laughs> if you're a Republican Christian, then we've definitely lost you. <laughs> yeah, we did that a while ago. Yeah, probably. Um, but uh, if you ever want to share your theories with us, uh, we're on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook. Drop us a line at WednesdayComicPodcast at gmail.com. And as always, enjoy. <laughs> Thank you.